Thank you for joining me. I'm Chris Hoy and today I'm going to share with you how to create this fun summer popsicle step by step from start to finish. Let's get started. Starting out with an MDF popsicle plaque and because it is a wood surface I am coating it with a layer of multi-purpose sealer. This will protect it this will make the paint adhere perfectly and this will also give you a nice smooth surface to paint on. I'm using a one inch foam brush to apply the product. Now if you're going to be using this for a door hanger or putting it on a wreath you may want to put the uh, multi-purpose sealer on both sides that will protect it from the elements especially if you're in humid weather. Give it a quick dry and I am going with toffee which is a light tan color for the popsicle stick using a three quarter inch brush and I'm just going to put the paint on nice and smooth kind of working it from the center out. This will help prevent any paint from running down over the edges. Because this is a darker surface it's going to take two coats to give a nice opaque coverage make sure that you dry well between each application of paint. Gave it another quick dry and then I'm placing a piece of painter's tape across the base of the popsicle just to make sure I have that nice straight line. Using festive green and these are all DecoArt Americana colors. Make sure that tape is pressed down nice and secure using the three quarter inch brush to just apply a nice smooth application of the paint across. It's probably about an inch and a half high or strip of across there. Give that a, a good dry. If you don't dry the paint between layers and you try to put wet paint on wet paint, it's just gonna lift and then you have kind of a mess that you have to go back and, and fix. Again, because this is a brighter color over a dark surface, it's going to take a couple coats of paint to get a nice smooth coverage. I am going to be painting the top part of it a bright red. Red kind of sometimes has the characteristic of not covering well. So if I paint this bright salmon down first and give a good base coat, um, when I put the red over top of it, it's just going to help it to be very bright and glow almost. So I'm using that three quarter inch brush, getting that tight edge against the green, and then I'm using vertical strokes and keeping all my strokes going in the same direction. Again, pay attention to those outside edges. You don't want paint dripping down. I'm going to put the stripes on the watermelon rind and I thought I had a great idea. I was going to use the one inch foam brush. I thought it would be perfect. I don't want these stripes heavy and solid. So I thought the spongy part on the, the foam brush would work well. Didn't take into consideration that bevel tip and that kind of was a struggle. And I was determined to make it work so I kept working with it. And trying to figure out how to make that go on well. So it, it does work. However, I would recommend just using a flat brush. I think you'll have better luck with it. I did go back and touch it up, but you can see I didn't make it real solid. I kind of like that look of light and dark. It's more of a rind effect. I have watermelon slice. I'm going to top coat that top part of the popsicle. Such a pretty color, just perfect. Careful with the edges. And I want it tight against that rind. So just take your time and get a nice even coat on there. And I did speed this up just a little bit so that you wouldn't have to watch all the dry time. I think in real time it maybe took a half hour from start to finish to paint this. So it really doesn't take long. This is a great project uh, if you have grandkids, nieces, nephews, 
or something you want to do for a friend or yourself in a quick afternoon this is a perfect project I did go to the inch and a half flat wash um, to put the second coat on I should have used that the first time because whenever you use a bigger brush you're going to have fewer brush strokes you're going to get a smoother finish it's just going to it just makes sense another quick dry I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of polka dots in the background I am using the same bright salmon and I have a bouncer tool which is a tool with two round sponges on each end different sizes put the paint on my palette I'm tapping the spouncer in my paint to make sure that I have even coverage across the base of the sponge make sure you have plenty of paint in there and then I'm touching it down don't press super hard just press it down evenly and gently and you're going to get almost a perfect polka dot it's such a fun way to add dots very easily and again this is a whimsical piece so it doesn't have to be perfect I'm trying to decide where to put the polka dots I should have started at the bottom and worked up I think that worked out well I didn't want to add any more I thought about it but I've I think too much of being too much I'll make it too busy kind of cleaning up my mess as I go snow white I've got a number two radical round and this is one of my signature brushes it's absolutely perfect for small details and I debated on whether to do a straight line but I decided to go with a wiggle line simply because if you do a straight line it has to be perfect and it's really hard to do perfect uh, I did end up doing two coats on the wiggle line I did not have a teardrop shape so I took a heart and I have another my painters pal stencil that has a little curve to it so I just patched the two stencils together to create that teardrop shape you can paint it uh, the teardrop or if you have a heart shape you could kind of patch another curved surface against it to create that teardrop I like to I call this layering stencils where you can create new shapes with the stencils you already have it's a great way to just get more bang for your buck using lamp black and my spectacular stencil brush I always before I stencil make sure that I wipe my stencil over a paper towel to remove the excess that helps ensure crisp edges on stenciling position the positioning the hello summer stencil make sure that you put a piece of painters tape to help secure it to keep it from shifting around loading my spectacular stencil brush well with snow white paint always make sure that you wipe it off on a paper towel before you begin the stencil I'm using very light taps if you pound super hard you'll just kind of push the paint underneath the stencil to ensure crisp clean edges just have a very light touch and apply it evenly let it dry and add a second coat and sometimes with the white it's such a light color it may take even three coats it's always better to have fewer coats than put it on super thick and heavy giving it a quick dry with the heat tool and then I'll add a second coat and it it makes such a big difference having that second coat on there it just is much much brighter and much more opaque take your time I always say stenciling is a lesson in patience just take your time because if you try to go faster you use too much paint it's just going to make a mess always wipe the brush on a paper towel every time you reload and my stencil brushes I have a lot of bristle to them so they're really they hold a lot of paint they're beautiful to work with they're nice and soft it turns stenciling into a very fun job and I went back this is my third coat I don't put my paint on super thick and heavy 
perfect. Want to brighten this up just a little bit more. I've got my number two round and Snow White. I'm just putting a little bit of a highlight on those seeds. I always say what a big difference a little bit of paint makes, but wow, absolutely huge. And I thought it would be fun. I started on the bottom with some dashes and I thought it looked kind of cute. So I decided to uh, go ahead and do the dashes across the bottom. I stuck my hand in the little white on the seed. Keep an eye out for that kind of thing. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to just continue those dashes all around. And I'm using that number two. Actually, I'm using my Epic Script Liner. It just will give you perfect little dashes. And it's a little bit longer than a regular liner, so you'll get more strokes out of each load of paint. To me, it just saves a lot of time, and I still get these beautiful little uh, fine lines. You could use a pen if you want to. If you're not comfortable with a paintbrush, I like the Uniball White Pen. I think that is perfect. It's probably one of the best opaque white gel pens that I have found. Just those little stitches really dress it up quite a bit. I'm trying to figure out how to do this without sticking my hand in the wet paint. So we kind of keep that in mind when you're doing this. You don't want to get your paint hand in the paint. And I'm just taking the handle end of my brush and dipping it into white and adding some po little tiny dots in there just brightens it up. I love how this turned out. I hope you give it a try. Thank you for joining me and please like and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you on our next adventure.